All right, guys. Hey, thanks for joining me today. Hey, before we get going, give me your I was so poor at Christmas as a kid story. Don't do something cheesy like I was so poor we had to cut holes in my pants pocket so I had something to play with. But do something like I was so poor they gave us a knife and a stick for Christmas. I got a stick. My brother got a knife. The two of us had to work together to carve out our own toys. Have fun with it. And uh, I look forward to reading your comments on that one. Um, who stands to profit the most from trying to create a balanced or pretty soil test? Can we all agree that if you had a major deficiency here, that by investing into that deficiency, you would have a potential very direct uh, crop response? Okay, thank you, a couple guys. I see a few heads shaking, yes, back there. It uh, quiet crowd tonight, but so so assuming that there's no major problem, things just aren't pretty. Who stands to profit the most, you or the people selling fertilizer? Um, so my my one question is, can anybody give me a direct? Show me the research that. If there's no problem, it's just low. Like on, on another field I have, you have phosphorus and 9, potassium of 50. Can somebody show me the research and data saying that, oh yes, if you move from, from 50 to 115 over this time frame, the graph is going to go like this, and your yield will directly match that. Or can anybody show me a direct correlation between plant uptake, between plant sap testing or plant tissue testing to moving numbers up on a soil test. So if, you're, if your plant is, is a little deficient or something by moving a couple numbers here, does that fix the deficiency in the plant? Is there a direct correlation between soil tests and plant tests? It, uh, can somebody please help me answer them questions? Because uh, we did that mine the field for nine years and it is confirmed the fallacy of phosphorus, what the soil scientists tell us who do not get paid to sell fertilizer is correct. You do not need to be applying phosphorus. Now, I am not saying that on your farm, go ahead and just listen to me and cut your application to zero. You have to figure out your own fertility program. You have to figure out how to wean yourself off. At what rate do you risk weaning yourself off at? <clears throat> um, so that, but but it's confirmed that what the soil scientists say is true. We, we mined the field for five, nine years, the phosphorus maintained. We were way below crop removal rates and the phosphorus maintained. Maybe 10 years from now, I'm making another video like, oh guys, was I wrong? But as of today, with the, the information in front of us, I gotta, I gotta, it's fact. But my opinion doesn't matter. It's fact. Our phosphorus maintained. pH maintained. And I'm going to reach out to a couple people to see if they can help write me up a little script explaining from a scientist's point of view why that pH maintained and what's happening in the soil and, and to, so we can understand how that's going. I think we can also agree that potassium is a little more difficult, a little more uh, local to your farm. We can't just start soil health and, and our soil tests prove it, that soil health in a, in a transitioning over nine years can't really get that potassium going. Um, so maybe for us to be soil health dependent on potassium and, and wean off of the retailer, that we might have to do something different on that field. Maybe we have to winter pasture on that field where we end up hauling in a lot of P and K and, and creating, generating manure, or we haul manure from the feedlot to that field, something. We have to do something to really build or move that, that K level or to even maintain it if we're mining our field. Um, I, I, I think that's a lot. That's some heavy... That's some heavy thinking right there, right up. Boom, four minutes of just, ow, oh, my brain hurts. My brain hurts. So what I did was I went down to Peterson's Mill. And I enjoy them guys at Peterson's Mill down in North Branch, Minnesota. Good group of guys, honest, fair, easy to work with. 
uh, open-minded and uh, old Ron, old Ron, he's tried retiring every year he retires and every year you go down there and he's sitting behind the counter answering the phone and uh, helping out and I, I appreciate um, the guys like Ron that they've, they've been doing it for many many years they've, they've already seen their the generation before them do a lot of these soil health practices so when I have a question that and Ron can be like, hey, if I got an idea for you in 1972, Billy down the road. And uh, and so it's it's kind of neat to see. I appreciate their help. So they got me some fertilizer prices. Some of the other co-ops, we all have a few retailers that we look at them retailers. Like Jesse Ventura looked at Billy Red Lions. Huh? Huh? Let me tell you something, Billy Red Lions. I can't stand to look at you right now after these horrible fertility recommendations. I'm going to smack these recommendations like I smacked Chico in the 1986 Tag Team World Champion Doubles. Wow, me and Macho Man. It, uh... <laughs> All right, so those of you that are still with us now, um, let's just do some math. So all we're going to do is look at the NP, or we're just going to look at the P and the K and the lime of trying to create a pretty soil test based upon my ugly soil test. So I have a soil test from, from a couple fields that the phosphorus is 9, the potassium is 50, and the pH buffer is 6. They're very ugly soil tests and fantastic yields that they, they, them fields are making tremendous corn yields and yet they are hideous on paper so what would I have to gain by trying to make them pretty on paper so let's just say to make it pretty on paper let's move the phosphorus from 9 to 20 okay we're at 9 we want to get to 20 that's a difference of 11 with me so far good thank you <clears throat> so to do that to move phosphorus one point you're going to need to apply about 18 to 20 pounds of product to move it one point um, so that's going to but being said it's a 46 percent product we're going to need to apply 430 to 480 pounds of product so about 450 roughly pounds of product to get from 9 to 20 which at the cost of you know as of today cost of fertilizer is going to be about 190 dollars per acre per acre 190 bucks well obviously we're not going to do it in one year we're going to assume that you have zero erosion that you your crop for the next five years is the exact yield that you're applying crop removal rates for. So our $190, you know, we get our two points per year. So we're going to do it over five years. So it's going to be about $40 per year. That's not so bad. $40 per acre per year on a 300 acre farm. That ain't nothing. That ain't nothing. That's only $12,000. At the end of the year, that's only twelve thousand extra dollars to make a, a a pretty soil test paper that nobody can even give us a direct response for crops with. Um, let's move over to potassium. The potassium on that same math, we're at fifty. We want to go to one fifteen. Um, Albrecht is going to argue and say, well. That, it just doesn't work that way, but he's just an old soil scientist. Like, pff, nobody ever quoted Albrecht papers before. Uh, he has nothing to do with agronomy. Um, we need to apply 6 to 10 pounds. Kind of a widespread there. 6 to 10 pounds to move one point. But we're 65 points shy. We're at 50, and we just want to get to 115. Kind of leaving medium, just entering the high category. <clears throat> 65 points. So we're going to apply anywhere. It's a 60% product, so we go backwards in math, and we're going to be anywhere between 650 and 1,000 pounds of product. 
That's going to average, if we, we add them up, divide by two, it's going to average about $300 a year, or $300 per acre over five years is $60 an acre. So between P and K, we're $100 per acre per year to get to our goal of making our soil test pretty. And as of yet, we have zero evidence with a direct link to an increased yield to cover that $100 per acre. Uh, you know, on $5 corn, that's 20 bushels. You need 20 extra bushels this year to, to pay for that building of the soil. Or you take profit away from the 20, 20 bushel per acre. And uh, so, yeah. And then the lime, lime is, is so subjective depending on where you're at around the country, the quality of lime. <clears throat> so we just, one of the lime places here was $30 an acre for five years to get from a buffer of six to 6.8, $30 a year. So it's $130 a year if we want to just make three things. We didn't even, we didn't even touch micros or anything, just PK and, and our, our pH. When, when two of them, two out of the three, are proven, we don't even need to mess with if we build soil health. So, instead of spending $130 an acre, where if you had 300 acres of corn, or you know, you, you get up in the morning, you go to work to come home to farm 300 acres of corn, and, I mean, just for simple math, I'm not going to divide your hypothetical farm up, but let's just say you're doing all corn, that's 40 grand. There's 40 stinking thousand dollars per year to make a pretty soil test. And again, zero evidence you will get that money back ever. And so to me that doesn't make sense. Pun very intended. But if we go back to fertilizing based upon crop removal rate. Um, we look at our, our, our Ag PhD app, and professors of science they are, and the P&K program is about $100 for 200 bushel corn. You're about $100, just shy of $100. Let's just, for easy math, say it's 100 bucks. So if you're doing conventional fertility program, you're going to throw $100 of P&K out there this year to grow your corn. When we've already seen over nine years, we don't need any of the P. We don't need it that's $60. We don't need any of that $60. I'm not saying you take your farm to zero. I'm saying you start doing your own test trials and you start figuring this stuff out on your own farm because I'm convinced after my own soil tests, I don't think I'm going to apply zero, but I, I can guarantee you I'm not applying $60 per acre, but on 300 acres of corn, that's $18,000. I don't know about you, but again, on our small family farm, $18,000 not spent to grow the same crop is money in my pocket, not some corporate ag place. It, uh, so what if we took that $100? Hypothetically speaking, let's just say boron. So let's take that $100 of P&K money and cut it in half. And so $50 goes to P&K program and $50 comes back to plant tissue testing and buying some micros. Hypothetically speaking, let's say we really cut back on our phosphorus. But let's say our plant shows deficiency, we get our tissue test back and it says I'm deficient in boron. Hypothetically speaking, let's say boron is a major player in helping a plant use or uptake phosphorus. Would we not have a better potential to crop response for a fertility dollar being invested by fixing that boron issue 
instead of being a moron farmer, putting more on chlorophyll, more like chlorophyll. It uh, would that not be a more logical way to spend your nutrient dollars? Is to do the tissue testing or the sap testing and saying, oh, here's what the plant is actually needing. Um, and, and invest them dollars and give the plant what it actually needs instead of being like, well, uh, I think we should throw some AMS at soybeans. And they're done that. Let's throw some AMS at soybeans. Does it, does it need sulfur? I don't know. But let's just do it. You know. What's $30 an acre? On 300 acres, that's only nine grand a year for a let's just do it for 10 grand a year. It, it, you follow what I'm saying? It, uh, I, I think this world of fertility is uh, really, really starting to confuse me more. Like I said, I opened this video with a lot of, or several good questions. Several good questions. Um, and so I guess you guys tell me how are you going to pay on your 300 acre farm? How are you going to pay? How are you going to come up with that extra 40 grand at the end of the year to, to make your, 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 your soil test pretty? And uh, why would you not? Why would you not move to a sap or tissue testing based program to potentially grow the same crop or better? Because do you not agree that by fixing that deficiency of boron would have a better, would grow us a better crop versus just moroning more P and K? I, 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 I think that's a fairly easy yes. And uh, so wouldn't it be better at the end of the year to grow the same bushel or potentially a couple more bushel, but on 10, 20, $50 less borrowed in the spring that you're paying interest on all year? God dang, I wish I would have thought of this stuff 10 years ago. I wouldn't be in the predicament I'm in now living paycheck to paycheck holy to moly it does uh, these are real numbers guys I, you start doing the math on your 300 acre farm and yeah you 15 50 bucks at 15 grand it is not hard it is not hard at, at the price of fertilizer to save 10 and 15 grand this year on fertilizer and grow the same crop or a better crop than you always been growing and uh, guys, I'm going to end it right there. My producer's hollering at me. We got to wrap this one up. But, uh, yep, okay, Mark. And uh, I, I won't do a, I got a fax coming and then fart. I won't do that to you. But, uh, no, thank you very much for watching. Looking forward to your guys' comments on this one. Have, have fun. Please answer my questions and uh, help us down this path. <laughs> so.